Well, thank you for joining me again. I'm Bo, the FPV guy. And today we're gonna do an unbox and a build video of the new Valkyra H500 Tally Hexacopter. It is built for a GoPro, but it also comes with an iLook and it has the options to fly much bigger cameras. We also got the new F12E with us which is a video radio and it's a quite nice development. So let's go straight to it. What I have here is a pre-production model and the legs doesn't work. So thankfully Matt, who knows much more than I do, has allowed me to unbox his. So let's put this one over here. I'm gonna give that to Matt and here's the box. This is how your H500 arrives an enormous cardboard box and a quick surgical cut should get us right into the inside of this box. There we go. And to be perfectly honest, I am amazed that Matt is letting me do this because unboxing new electronics and toys is like half the pleasure, maybe even nine tenths of the pleasure. So to get this apart, if my production assistant here, Matt, would kindly pull on the handle. I'm afraid I'm gonna go backwards. One box. And since we are visiting in Matt's kitchen, I had to promise not to throw things over the camera like I usually like to do. So we're in, we're looking at the box in a box and we're proceeding. Now, as we go on here, I wanna say right now before we go on, you may wanna grab a cup of coffee because this is not a three minute YouTube video. This is gonna be a walkthrough of this hexacopter some thoughts about how to use it better and how it's gonna fly for you and also a walkthrough of the radio. So this is a video you wanna watch if you are interested in the H500 Hexa. If you're not interested in that, turn off right now. But if you are interested, you should subscribe. So click on the subscribe button and let's carry on. We are officially cracking this open and finding another box. We're repeating the official method. And with all respect for Matt, if you're doing this at home, I recommend getting an assistant that's cuter. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So we are in. And by the way, this box can actually be used to tr transport it. Here is the quick start guide. And I have been, I have the PDF files of this and I'm gonna go through and write a lot of notes on this and upload it to my blog at fpvguide.com. I'll put that over there. Let's not lose the foam blocks. And here's the hexacopter. Matt, you got more props than I did. So in here is actually four bags of propellers. Two sets of right hand and two sets of left hand. And there is also one hexacopter. So what I think we need to do is, why don't you hold that for a second? And we're gonna crack into the next layer here. Okay, and we have the other major item here, the F12E radio. And I'm now gently unboxing. Like I said, unboxing new stuff like this is a religious experience and I'm actually surprised that Matt will let me fondle his new radio. So here's the radio and we have the hexacopter right here. Let's take a quick look at it before we start digging things out. It comes already with the rail for the gimbal right down here. Interestingly, 
Valkyra has really put easy ports in. See the little slit in this pocket right here? This is so that you can pull cables out. Down here on the back is a port that has two 12 volts plugs in it. And over on the other side is your USB port. Finally up here, they put the antennas out of this port here. So it's very easy to, with all these ports to make changes. And in my case, I put a Immersion RC a VTX on here. And I just plugged it right in here with a cable out of the RC or Immersion RC kit. So that was incredibly easy. So in addition, Matt's kit also comes with an iLook Plus. That is a, what I call a GoPro fact, form factor camera. It also comes with a three axis, the G3D gimbal. That is a three axis gimbal. So let's pull out the quick start guide here because that's what we're gonna try to follow today. And included is also the manual for the radio on the CD-ROM. And we don't need to worry about the binding guide. What we do need to worry about is this quick start guide and systems flow chart. I don't think there's a flow chart really, but somebody used that word. So the first thing we need to do is install propellers. And before we get into installing propellers, I am gonna grab one of these. And these are beautifully made, by the way. They're very, very nice, very smooth, and very nicely made. The finish is exceptionally good compared to cheaper propellers. And somewhere here, I brought my Dupro propeller balancer. But these things are different because there's a top on them, so you can't actually stick them, tr a pin through them. So what I did was I ran tape on the end of this shaft of the propeller balancer, so I can put it in, and now the propeller sticks on the stick. Then we take the balancer, and you could just do this with any stick, and you don't need a Dupro because you could just put it on a water glass or something like that, and now, if you see what I see, this thing is twisting down pretty quickly. So this one obviously needs some tape. So I have some tape ready here and I'm just gonna need to use a little piece of tape, probably about this much. And what we're gonna do is put it on the side of the propeller that is that came up. So we're just gonna put it on here, kind of halfway on the leading edge of the propeller. Wow, so we're just gonna, there. I moved the tape further out on this thing, and so now what I did is I moved the tape out further, and now when we put it down here, you can see that now, whoops, there. So it's basically balanced now. The other Ah, that's close. That's close enough. If it was still moving... Okay, I think the air conditioning is messing with us. <laughs> but, so, we're gonna blame the AC at this point. But, basically, if this was still moving when you have it vertical, then you want to put a piece of thick tape right here on the side of the hub. So first you balance it this way, then you turn it vertical and you put a piece of tape on the hub to get the straight balance, and then the propeller is ready to go. So we're gonna declare this ready to go. And now you know how to balance your propellers. Any stick on a water glass will do the same thing. So, well, the next thing it says we're gonna do is put the propellers on here. We already balanced them. So it says to put the propellers on, but I'm gonna skip this right now because the first thing they wanna do is power this up and unfold the landing gear. And then they say compass calibration. And personally, I will rather calibrate this without the propellers on. So let's just go ahead and power it up, unfold the landing gear and calibrate the compass and then proceed to the propellers. That sounds safer to me. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is we have our fully charged battery here, which by the way, is a really beautifully built battery. This is the IUAS black version. And on the side here is a little rubber plug. And I gotta tell you, that's gonna go really quickly. This is where the balance plugs fits in. And that definitely gets in the way because you have to put it all the way back in before you're ready to fly. So we're moving this and that goes in the bag. You can see here and the plugs for the power is up here and down here. So that comes in, we plug it in. And now according to the manual, we're gonna turn this upside down and I'm just gonna put a little bit of bubble wrap down on the table. Now, take the screen off and you guys can see easier. There's obviously no pictures yet, but the first thing we're gonna do, and right now, I'm gonna set the legs to down, because, or to retracted legs, because the legs are retracted right now. So with that, I'm going to slide. You can't see that, can you? On the back of the battery, there's a little slider up here. So to start this out, we're gonna slide that across. The next thing we're gonna do is push this. Now we are powered up. Now we're gonna lay it down and it doesn't see the radio yet. So, everything is down. Okay. And we are now powered up. The radio has buzzed. It always buzzes one time after you power up and you can see there's no blinking of the lights here. So that means the radio has been bound to the H500. Yeah. Woohoo! Mm. I gotta tell you, I'm really nervous about these legs because mine didn't work right and thankfully Valkyria is fixing that right away, but I'm a little, make sure nothing is blocking the legs when you do this. So here we go, legs are unfolded. We're turning it over and the first order of operations now is going to be calibrated. So let's get to it. To start dance, we put these down Let's try that again. Ah, that's probably why. There we go. This was left in GPS, so I put it back to manual and now we can start the calibration. So the first thing we do is pick this up. I'm just gonna grab it here and we're doing it nose wise. Then I'm grabbing it from behind. That sounds much more fun than it is. And we're doing rolling it. Now, finally, we're gonna spin it. And it's not actually the compass, it's the IMU we are calibrating here. Finally, it looks down and we're spinning it. What I don't know is every time I do this, halfway through the last move, the lights goes off. So we're just gonna have to believe it's done. Now, to save these settings, what we're gonna do is grab this, push it, and did you hear the radio? We just turned off this, and now you can hear the radio are vibrating. So that's telling me there's a problem. And by the way, if you fly a full battery, so if you fly for about 20 some minutes, this is gonna start vibrating on battery low. That gives you about two minute warning. So when this starts vibrating while you're flying, you should be getting yourself landed on the ground pretty much as fast as possible. So with that in mind, it's time to put propellers on here. The way we do this, here's the propeller we balance. You can see the little piece of tape and you can also see that there is a arrow right here. So that tells us this goes this way. Now what we're gonna do is look at the arms Right here, you can see down here on the arm, there's an arrow that goes around. 
So I'm gonna spin that right on here. Going there. So now it's on. We're gonna grab one of the white ones because the next ones now get the white tops. There. Now, as I'm turning this around, Matt and I was looking at this a little while ago and we noticed right here on the motor, look at that little imprint of the hand, the one that's warning you don't touch this. And what Matt found, like I said, he's the smarter one in the room, is on the E600 motors from DJI, which is really nice motors from E-Motor, is the exact same logo. So I don't know this for sure, but my wild guess is that Valkyra has really stepped up the quality of these motors. What we also found was after flying this for 20 minutes, these motors was hardly warm at all. They were warm to the touch, but they were not overheated. So this is, appears to be really nice motors. This really is a beautiful hexacopter. And the other interesting thing here is, I mean, this is like a GoPro. Well, it's not a GoPro, but a Phantom. This is a form factor. It's a clean, ready to fly aircraft. Here's a Phantom and it's obviously not the big brother. It's more like the big nasty cousin because that is a big hexa, but it is designed essentially in the same spirit. It is a monocoque hollow shell. It's, and so it's an easy, ready to fly aircraft. Comparing it real quickly to a very popular aircraft, the DJI 550, which a lot of people is using to fly GoPros and slightly larger cameras as well. It's actually interesting to see that when you measure these side to side, this is a little bit shorter, like there, here you can see it, than the 550, and it's able to carry about the same amount. So this is a more compact package that gets you almost 25 minutes of flight time. So it's very nice, very efficient little package. So we got the propellers installed and we have done our calibration dance for the IMU. The next issue on the, in the manual here is installing the 3D gimbal. So let's open up the box with the gimbal. And what we find here is of course a manual. I don't like reading manuals, but there's people out there that do. So let's pull this out and And here is the screw with a little set screw. The first thing we need is this little set screw right here. It's actually funny, Matt, because I did not actually use this screw. Mm -hmm. I was wondering how to lock it in place because I don't use this bracket. I usually just use a rubber band instead because it takes too much, too much time to install this bracket, in my opinion. So let's put that up here. And you can see there's a track right here. So we're just gonna slide uh, this thing right down like that. And this is a three millimeter metric screw that goes right down here. And what I did was I went and, went and found a finger screw in my box because I didn't open that Ziploc back. So there we go. It's in place and we need a camera now. So here's the iLook Plus camera. That is an enormous improvement from the original iLook camera. And you can really t easily tell the difference. It has a very long nose where the original one had a short nose. So if you get a camera with a short nose, it's not an iLook Plus camera. Also in here is the antenna and we can't turn any of this on until we have gotten this installed because you never want to turn a video transmitter on without the antenna installed. So there it is. Now we have an antenna on the camera. For now, I'm just going to leave the plastic on 
since we're not outside. This is set up for still photography. You can see that right here. The only adjustments to this camera is, do you want pictures or do you want video? I usually shoot video, so I'm sliding it this way. Now what we're gonna do is install that on the gimbal. And we do that by laying that, and I'm gonna lean this backwards real quickly. So we're gonna lay that here. I'm gonna grab a rubber band. And normally, I'm a two rubber band guy. Just because Murphy's Law suggests that one of these rubber bands will one day break, except it has never happened to me. I have never lost a camera even when crashing, so I believe in the rubber bands. It's very easy, and when you take it away later, it's very easy to get it on and off without having to use a screwdriver. Now, you see that white cable hanging down here? That needs to come up here where there is a complex port right there. So we're gonna open that port up by pulling the little rubber cover, and then we're gonna grab this is a little bit bigger than some of the quads I review, so it's a little harder to move it around. And find it. There, it's in. I'm sorry my finger was covered that. It's kind of a little bit fiddly putting it in there. But once it's in, it's really convenient because you have the cable coming out of the aircraft and the gimbal is right here. So now with the gimbal installed, you can have the camera right here and the first thing I notice is this seems to be a little bit nose heavy for me. So to balance that you may want to stick some layers of pretty thick tape on the back side of the gimbal until the camera stays in place by itself when the power is not on. That is going to help the stability of the system. Now before we proceed you notice this little cable sticking out from the camera and that we're gonna make sure it doesn't get caught in the gimbal. And then we're gonna stick it right over here. So slowly, right in there. So now it's plugged in to the gimbal controller because the beautiful thing that I did this time is the system is controlled from here through the big cable into the gimbal controller and from the gimbal controller to the camera. So now we are basically ready to go and let's put that down. We have installed it. We have finished this section and this section in the manual. And let's flip this over. Next thing's coming up is unlocking the motor and also the basic illustrations for using the radio. Before we do that, let's take a break and unpack the goodies that came with this. The first thing that came is a charger and to contradict to myself, I'm not going to unpack that. This is just a power supply. It does what power supplies do. However, there is a IMAX charger right here, and that is a sweet charger. So inside here is a set of charging cables. And it seems to me we're missing one set which wasn't in there, so it's not in that box. So here we go. This is actually, they're giving you a quite nice standard, industry standard charger right here. And in addition to that, by the way, the way this works and with the power supply that this works, but it's not the world's best power supply. Let me just tell you that right now. Basically, this charger can charge at four plus amps. However, the power supply cannot manage that. So if you set it to four and start charging, the, this will go black. All you have to do is unplug the power to the power supply, turn it back on after about 10 seconds. This will get powered again, now, just, then you hit start one time. It's gonna be blinking here where it says amps, and then you use button number two to push it down till you get to about one and a half. Then you are ready to start charging. Of course, you also need to make sure 
that you hit enter one time and tap over after and make sure it says 22 volts or 6s for the battery. Now to start it then, you just simply hold down until it beeps. It will say if it is correct and then you say yes by pushing one more time and off you go your charging. So this is that. Now for the battery, here is the charging cables. And let me just unplug this real quickly. So the charging cable is like this. You remove this from it and you can see you have two big prongs. They go in right here and then we connect this to the cable that connects to the charger. Up on the side you have the rubber door. You pull this out and you put this in. This only fits one way. You put this in here and that has to fit in to the balance tap port on your charger. So you put that in right here and push it in until there, now it's mounted. So you can basically leave that in the charger because you don't need to fly it with the battery. Now I'm gonna pull it out again. Make sure you pull evenly on all the cables so you don't yank one out because you will need this cable to charge this battery. Same thing here, you just use your fingers and you pull this out safely. So I think we're done with the charger. We've already charged this battery, so we're not worried about that. It's kind of fun. I keep handing little pieces of wrapping to Matt, who's politely picking them up one at a time. So this would be the next bag to take a quick look at. Here's another piece. See, Matt is really good at this. I think he should have like a studio union t-shirt or something like that, that would really in here is a trainer cable. That is, if you have two F12 radios, you can connect them to each other. And you can have a student and a more experienced student or trainer flying the other one and who can take over in case of an emergency. Here is a cable, USB cable to upgrade your transmitter. So when they come out with an updated firmware and there's already a couple of small issues I've seen, so I'm sure there'll be a firmware update. You wanna hold on to that. Here is USB cable for updating your helicopter, or rather the H500. Then there is cables, and this is actually very cool. This is the cables in case you're going to use your G3 gimbal. If you're gonna use this gimbal, but on an other copter, you need these cables. So whatever you do, even though you have no use for it right now, don't throw it away. Finally, in the tool section, in here is the tools and parts that you may use. Interestingly, and here is the little wrench to turn, to install the antenna for the camera securely. So there, we'll put that over here. We have the bracket. And going into the last bag, we find the strap for the radio and also an antenna. So, can I borrow the radio? <laughs> Here, play with that one. There, it's always good to have more than one radio handy. Here's antenna, and as I put this on, I wanna tell you, I accidentally yanked this apart. So it's a really big, beefy looking antenna. It goes on right up here, and now we have an antenna on it. What I did was it was on the front seat of my car and I just reached for it, it's so big, and I grabbed the radio by this and I pulled on it. And next thing I knew, I had pulled the plastics top off, which goes back on, but don't pull on the antenna. It could get damaged, so be very kind to that. Now looking at, on the other side here, we have a video antenna. So we have an antenna here, we're gonna put that on. So now we have control antenna and video antenna. And this is a huge progress for the F series of radios because with me I have the original F series, the old Devo F4 that's already a couple of years old. And the first thing we, a lot of us did with that was to rip the video antenna apart and make a plug up on the shoulder so that we could put better antennas on it. 
Valkyra has saved me the time and put an antenna here and now I can put any antenna I want for video right on the top of the radio. I gotta tell you there's only one thing that's missing in this radio. That is a slot for an SD card so we can record the telemetry settings that we get back while we're flying. But maybe in the next version. Inside this, actually let me try radio with you because this radio has no battery in it. Valkyra has really gone all out on this. Down here, you're gonna find there's a video port. Here's video and audio. I would only use the video. So let's see if I can close it again. Up on top, you find a power port. So if you want to have a really big screen, you can put, plug that screen into this power port right here on top of the radio. On the side, you have two channels on each side. Here's one channel slider, and there's an other channel here. The interesting thing they made is so you can reach it from both sides. The same consideration on the other side, there's one slider. That, by the way, is the roll. And here you have the pitch. Then we have the switches here. The one up on the shoulder here is the auto takeoff. I'm not a fan of that, and to be honest with you, I'm gonna tell you, I suggest flying this in manual. And then when you're in the air, switch down this, the mix switch, one click, now you're in GPS support. Switching it one more down brings it to return to home. All the way back up, over here, is our gear switch. Up is gear down. Pulling it downwards is pulling up the gear. It's important to remember because when you start, all of these switches should be pushed up and away from you. Then as you start, you go down to GPS over here. Then you go put the gear switch down and now you're flying with the gear up. Then again later, before you land, Make sure you push this thing and drop the gear so you don't land on the camera. Let's look at one more sweet feature. Have you ever been annoyed with getting the custom batteries for your radio? It looks like Valkyra has ended that problem. Here is a 3S 2200 milliamp battery. Inside is options to plug in either a 2S, a 3S, or a JST cable from the supplied eight battery holder. Ah, here's the eight battery holder. It has a foam padding in the one end. So you could go down to the local grocery store and get enough batteries to fly, and that switches in here. But quite frankly, almost all of us have 3S 2200 batteries. That would go right in there and that's gonna probably last you flying longer than you're gonna wanna fly. So that's ready. And if you run out of battery, you can always scavenge some from your friends of these little ones. I gotta say, I feel the ergonomics of this radio have changed. It has become very big. And when I fly, I have to reach for the buttons. So this is a really, really nice radio, but dear Valkyra, I wish you guys had made it just a little bit smaller. I've got big hands, and I imagine guys with smaller hands are gonna really have to reach for this. That said, however, this is a nice workspace for flying for a long time. It's a heavier radio because of the big battery, and you probably wanna put the strap on so you can kinda support it around your neck while you're flying. So, that the other thing it does, as you saw earlier, it has a hood to keep the sun off. I do not feel this screen is bright enough that you can actually fly FPV from it, but it's perfect for flying the camera and setting up a shot and framing a shot while flying. For flying FPV, I'm still gonna stick to my goggles because they exclude distracting things and I get a clear picture. And my Fat Shark goggles are 100% compatible with the video from the iLook Plus camera. So this is easy to fly with. So now we have basically covered the basics about the transmitter, or the radio. And we have also gone through this and I've shown you the basic setup 
that comes with this, it's worth remembering this Hexa can carry a lot more than a GoPro. It can even carry larger cameras and you can use other brands of gimbals available for larger cameras. However, let me show you the GoPro setup. So let me hand you that. And the world's most perfect studio assistant is handing me the other H500. On this one, we have a GoPro sitting right down here. And I want you to notice right away, when I let go, it is not balanced. That is because down on the end here, the way they do it, they have a little metal cap. That is to compensate for the antenna on the iLook radio. So now I take the metal cap off, I put that down, and look at this. The camera is balanced. So it's a very clever way to balance that antenna. It is generally speaking set up like it was before, but here is an Immersion RC GoPro cable to an Immersion RC 600 milliwatt 5.8 video transmitter. I have attached the Spironet antenna to it and the cable, I can show you right here without knocking the camera over, this cable right here came in the kit with the Immersion RC VTX and that cable fits directly into the little plug that Valkyra so kindly have made here. Valkyra has really made this Hexa ready for a lot of other setups, recognizing that professional users are not going to be happy with having to drill holes in their new quad in order to pull cables out. The other thing, like I said, I had some issues with the landing gear here and no, I got ready to go inside to take it apart to fix it. It turns out Valkyra has even made it very easy to pack down. Watch this. Here's the landing gear with a built-in servo right here. That is the servo that drives the landing gear. The landing gear is incredibly light and you can pull it apart like that and you push it right back in, wait for the click, and now the landing gear is installed back in place just like that. So if you're gonna travel and travel really flat, you can just pop out the two landing gears, prop, pop off the gimbal and you're ready to fly. Now this afternoon I was flying this FPV with goggles and I gotta tell you, flying an FPV with a tree axis gimbal is really strange because even though I was turning the yaw, my picture is still going straight. So I was like, oh no, what's going on? Until I start seeing the skit come in the picture and I'm going, no, I am turning, but the camera has not turned yet. So that was a little bit disturbing, but you can get used to it. Personally, I would probably mount a fixed camera right up under the nose here for a flight camera so that I can feel in my goggles the way the aircraft is moving. Let me put this down for a minute. Oh, and before I do that, I wanted to show you on these, up on the shaft here, take the propeller off so you can see. Up on the shaft right here is a lock screw, a set screw. You want to take some Loctite and make sure you Loctite all the set screws so everything stays locked together nicely. Just a suggestion, but I'm doing it to mine. Let's put the propeller back on. So now the last thing to mention here probably is, like I've showed you, the on button here, and then we get a little bit of a red glow. Now when I push this, you see this blinking here? In about five minutes of flight, it's gonna move to three and the last one will be blinking. Another five minutes later, it will go down to two and the number two will be blinking. And finally, when you have only one blinking, you've got about five minutes of flight left. So this is an easy way, if you have many batteries, to pull out batteries and see how much flight time you have. There's basically about five minutes per bar. Well guys, that was basically the walkthrough of the new Valkyra Tally H500. I hope this long video has been useful to some of you. And if you are at all interested in the Valkyra Tally and FPV flights in general, Subscribe to my channel, so click right up here on the screen where it says subscribe. Also check out my website or my blog at fpvguide.com. And if you have any support issues, shoot me an email and I can probably point you in the right direction. 
And if you hear this sound in the background, that's Matt having a great time. <laughs> okay, and that's still rolling, so that's all good. That sound you just heard in the background was Matt finding out the hard way that when you can try to connect the H500 to the APM mission planner, the propellers will spin up. So, last word of warning today, make sure you remove the propellers before you try to connect it to APM. Please, because I don't like to have helicopter pilots with their fingers cut off. So that's it, subscribe to my channel, stay tuned for more videos, and we're gonna take this test flying and get you some actual flight samples of this video. Thank you so much for joining us, and happy flying. <laughs>